Hi, my name is Michael Picard, and I have a new book called How to Play Philosophy. How to Play Philosophy is a collection of texts, mostly essays, composed with the particular purpose of stimulating readers to think philosophically. The topics were chosen by participants of Cafe Philosophy, the public participatory philosophy event I hosted weekly in Victoria, Canada for over 12 years. My approach to these crowdsourced topics was also inspired by those participants who were the first-line readers of my book. I took it to be my job to offer, as if in a well-arranged bouquet, an assortment of perspectives on the weekly topic, not in order to narrow them down or settle us all upon a shared conclusion, but instead to increase available options for opinion. It's easy to be provocative, but that was not my purpose. Better, I thought, to embody wonder, curiosity, and playful humor in order to make the sometimes hard and bitter medicine of philosophy go down the more sweetly. So this book is for people who are still thinking their way through things, but are yet up for a challenge, not for those who are hankering for settled truths and well-trodden paths. I hope you like it. What's perhaps most distinctive about this book of philosophy is the playful character evident in many of its essays, and which of course lends the book its title. The spirit of play does not detract from the serious intent of the book, for the gravity of philosophical problems is never made light of, and my pedagogic mission is never lost sight of. How to Play Philosophy grapples with some of the most far-reaching ideas of philosophy. I'd recommend it for undergraduate-level readers. I assign it in some of my own courses as a supplemental text, yet it's not laid out like a textbook. It's not organized from elementary to advanced, and it's worlds away from the dry exegesis from which many secondary treatments of the big philosophical problems suffer. I assume more intellectual and emotional sophistication on the part of my readers, though not a background in academic philosophy. This generous assumption can be seen in the free use of literary devices in many of the essays, and which represent yet another level of the play referred to in the book's title. I resort to such devices not for mere entertainment, nor even simply to beautify, but to communicate layers of significance and to dramatize differences in views in order to promote more engaged reflection and careful reconsideration. Had it been my purpose to establish my authorial conclusions in the readers' minds, ambiguity would have been a pitfall, and paradoxes would have been put forward only to be straightened out and resolved. But I take ambiguity to be a more deep-seated and useful feature of language, not wholly innocent, to be sure, but not a bug as indeed it is in attempts at literal proofs. You won't find many of those here. As such, puns and creative ambiguity can be used to reset thinking and the power of paradox exploited so as to become the very engine of thought, as one reviewer of an earlier ebook edition said of my writing. So get your copy of How to Play Philosophy and let me know what you think. You can review it on Goodreads, on Amazon, share it on social media, Watch out for my other books and keep playing philosophy. Thank you.